Sechis Yivam Estaf Pei Tes continues the Gemara's analysis of the Mishnah discussing a woman whose husband went to Medina Siyam. She was told that he died, she remarried, and then he came back. The Gemara will discuss some of the Knossos that are levied against her in the Mishnah. Then the Gemara will go into a totally different topic that of somebody who's Marfash Truma and uses bad produce for the Truma. The Gemara will bring a Machlokas as to whether the Truma counts or it doesn't count, and as part of that, Machlokas will bring a proof from our Mishnah, and that'll take us into understanding that, so I guess. Let's begin the Gemara. We start on the last few lines of Daf Peches. The Mishnah said that if a woman is married, her husband travels to overseas, and she is told that he died, and she's permitted to remarry. She goes and she remarries, and then her original husband comes back. So the Mishnah at Paskin, at least in the case where she was told to remarry based on one witness who said that her husband had died. The halacha is, is that she requires a get from both husbands. Now, I understand she requires a get from the first husband. She's married to him. That marriage never ended. She can't stay with him because she was a Mazana with someone else. Well, why does she require a get from the second husband? She was an Ashish when she did marriage with the second husband, and therefore she's not married to him. She shouldn't require a get. So the Gemara answers that it's Xer Midra Banan. People will see that she was married to the second man and her first husband is still alive. They will assume that she divorced him. If she divorced him, she was probably married to the second man. If then she goes and marries someone else, then what happened to the second husband? Why didn't she need to get from him? People will assume that she was a married woman married to the second man and she left without a get. They'll see that in Asia, she doesn't need a get. In order to prevent that mistake, we require a get from her second husband husband. So the Gemara says, if that's true, so how come the next Mishnah, where she didn't do a beer with the second husband, she was just Niskadesh, she just had Kedushin to the second husband, how come over there we don't say that she requires a get? We should have the same thing. People assume that she just went free without a get, but from Kedushin, one requires a get. So the Gemara says, yes, he has to give her a get. She can't, he can't stay with her, but he also has to give her a get. So the Gemara says, if that's true, so then people are going to think that somebody could be machzir grushoso mishenis arsa. That's in there. The halach is that she's allowed to go back to the first husband. She was never mazana with the second husband, so she's allowed to go back to the first husband. But then what's happening is she was married to the first husband. People assume that she divorced him. She went to the second husband. She gets a get from him, and then she goes back to the first husband. So people will think that somebody's allowed to marry one man, go marry somebody else, and they go back to the first one, and that's usher. So Gemara says, this town holds like a Yasef ben Kippur, who holds that if the second marriage was only Erisin and not Nesuin, she is permitted to go back to the first husband. So you don't have to make Xerah to show that that's also, because it's not. Gemara says, but it can't be that she gets a get, and she's obligated to get Midar Bana from the second husband, because the Mishnah says, in the case where it was just Kedushin, which is this case we are discussing here, it says that she's not puzzle to Kehuna. Now, if she requires a get from a second husband, Midar Bana, that puzzles her to Kehuna. The Mishnah there says even if she gets a get from the second husband, it's meaningless because she was never married to the second husband and she's not possible to Kehuna. But we know that any type of get at all does possible Kehuna. Obviously, she does not require a get in Midabun. It's not correct what you're telling me that she requires a get. So the Mishnah says they have to give a different answer. The Seifa, I'm not concerned that people will think that she was married to the second guy. The second uh, case where she only did Kedushin, people won't think she was married. People will realize that Kedushin was a mistake. They'll realize that they sh- she thought her, her first husband was dead, and it turns out he wasn't. In the Reisha, though, why don't we say the same thing? The Mar says, the Mar says in the Reisha, they could have said the same thing, but we made a knas. We penalized her. Gemara says, why did you penalize her in the in the first case where she did Nisun with the second husband and not in the second case where she did Ayerson with the second husband? Gemara says, because she never did an Isser. She didn't do any actual Isser. She never came to a level of doing a Bia, which was us, sir. There was no reason to make a Knas. However, in the first case where she actually did be with the second husband, we made a Knas and said she requires to get from the second husband. All right, now the next line of the Misha said that she loses her Ksuba from both men. Gemara says the reason for that is that the purpose of Ksuba is to make it difficult for her to be sent away. We don't want the husband to divorce her easily, therefore we want him to have financial obligations. Here, we do want him to send them to send her away. She has to be separated from both husbands, therefore she has no reason for her to get Iksuba. Now, she doesn't get the fruits of her property, that is, the profits the husband earned from the property that she brought into the marriage. He generally has to pay her at the end of the marriage. He doesn't have to do that now. He doesn't have to give her support and doesn't have to give her clothing that she brought into the marriage. 
So Gemara says the reason for that is because these are all Tanai Ksuba, they're all conditions of the Ksuba, and conditions of the Ksuba have the same Alachas as the Ksuba itself. They're all things that were put into place to keep her in the marriage, and here we want her out of the marriage. Now, if she grabbed it from both of them, the Mishnah says that she has to pay it back. Gemara says that's obvious, she doesn't have the right to take it. The Gemara says, no, you may think that she has the right to keep it if she grabs it, because she does have some connection to it, this comes to teaching me she does not have the right to keep it at all. All right, now we'll get to our next topic, the Gemara quotes in Mishnah, that talks about what happens if somebody separates Truma from Tomei produce on Tahar produce. That is, he has two vats, he has a vat of Tahar produce, and he has a vat of Tomei produce. He takes the Tomei fruits and he says, this is going to be Truma on that Tahar things over there. So the halacha is you're not allowed to do that lechatchila because that means that the truma is tummy from the start. When it becomes truma, it's already tummy. A kohen can't eat tummy truma, so the kohen ends up losing it over here. The question is what happens if you do go ahead and you do this? So here we have to split it to whether you did it b'shogeg or you did it b'meze. Did you purposely take from the Tomei or you didn't know that it was Tomei, you didn't know what you were doing over here? So if you did it b'shogeg, so the lacha is it counts, it works, the truma is truma, it's chal, and you give it to the Kohen, it's the Kohen's loss that he got the Tomei truma. If ever you did it b'meze, you purposely wanted to do this in order that you shouldn't lose, so the Mishnah says, You didn't do anything. It doesn't count as anything. Now, the Gemara brings the Machlokas, what does it mean you didn't do anything? Rav Chizda says, it doesn't count as Truma. Nothing happened. The Truma is not Truma. And the stuff, the Tahar fruits are not fixed. They stay Tevel. Everything is Tevel just like in the beginning. The truma has no din of truma, it's tevel, and the stuff that you were trying to be metakein has no din of being metakein, it is tevel. That is Rav Chiz's opinion, nothing happened. Now Rabbi Nassim, Rabbi Aishia says, no, he didn't accomplish anything, but the truma that he separated is truma. It does have the halacha of truma. It does have the isurim of truma on what he separated apart. Now the Gemara is going to discuss whether this is Doraisa, Durbanan, and how does this work exactly. So again, the Mechlech between Rav Chizda and Rav Nasan is the truma that he separated, the Tomei truma that he separated, does that count as uh, truma or not? Now, what's the reasoning behind it? So Rav Chizda doesn't want to say that it counts as truma because we want him to take truma again. We don't like what he did. His truma is no good. We want him to take truma from Tahar stuff and give that to the Kohen. But if you say that what he separated is truma, it counts as truma also, he's not going to take another truma. I'll say, this is truma. Why should I take another truma? So, in order to prevent that from happening, we say that the original thing doesn't count as truma at all. That sounds like the Rai said is truma, and we took the din truma away from it. The Gemara is going to ask later, and that'll be our sugya that connects back to our Mishnah, if it's truma da how do we have a right to make it not Truma anymore? Now, the Gemara has a uh, Kashi here. How is this different than a different mission we learned on a similar subject? And that's somebody who takes Truma and he uh, separates a squash. And it turns out that it is a bitter, foul testing squash. Or he takes a watermelon and it turns out that it's rotten. So what he did was is he took bad fruits as Truma. You're not supposed to do that. So the halacha over there in this Mishnah is that he should go take truma again. The original fruits that he separated counts as truma, and he should go take truma again. So this is a kash on Rav Chizda. Rav Chizda said that if you want him to take truma again, you have to make the original thing not truma. A person's not going to take truma a second time if the original thing stays as truma. That's what we said in the case of Tame. Over here where it was rotten, how come he said, no, it is Truma, and he has to take again? You should say the same thing. He's not going to. Moore says, no, this is different. This is because it was a shogig. Here, it says that he did it, and then later he found out that it was rotten. So that he did B'shogig. The case where he did B'shogig, he's a good guy. So he'll go, he'll do it again. That's not a problem. We only said, in the case of Amazing where it isn't good. So Moore says, okay, but well, then you have a kasha in the case of shogig in our Mishnah. The case of our Mishnah said that when he did it B'shogig, it cancels Truma and everything's fine. He didn't say we have to. He has to separate again. How come here we said you have to separate again? So the Gemara um, answers that over there it was shogig 
Korov Lemezid. Because he should have inspected it. He should have checked it. it. If it's rotten or not, it's something you can tell. So go check it out. Find out is it rotten or not. The fact that he didn't make sure that it was good quality fruits, that was a problem. And therefore, even though he did Bishoge, we make him take Truma again. In our case, it was just Tomei. How is he supposed to check? Tuma is not something that can be detected in any way if you're not aware of it. Therefore, we don't penalize him and we say that if he did a Bishoge, it's Chal Truma and it's Matak in it and it is fine. Now, the Gemara says I have another kasha. And this kasha is from the case where somebody separates Shuma from a uh, collection of fruits that is not Chayv and Shuma to be metakein fruits which is Chayv and Shuma. This is Menaptor al Now, Menaptor is if it was fruits that was growing in a flower pot that has no connection to the ground. There's no hole in the pot. It gets no sustenance from the earth. That's not chayv in a shuma. That's called a flower pot without a hole. Now, if it's in a flower pot that is in a hole, then it is deriving uh, nutrients from the earth, and it is chayv in a shuma. So somebody takes chuma minaptur al chayv. He takes a chuma out of a flower pot that is not chayv because it has no hole in order to be metakin produce which grew bechayv where there is uh, a hole. So ha. Allah over there is that it counts as truma, and it has to take truma again. Again, back to my kasha. According to Rechista, who said that people won't do it twice, how come over here we say that it's truma, and he has to take truma again? I thought you said people won't do it twice. So the Gemara says, no, here he will do it twice because it's in a different container. He took truma from one container, the container that had no hole, and now you're telling him, go take truma from a different container, one that has a hole. Therefore, you take him take from a di- you're telling him take from a different container that he'll do. But if you tell him from the same container, take true the original truma is truma, the tame stuff is truma. Go take again from tahar stuff. There, he's not going to listen. He's going to say, "I don't understand." If this is truma, why do I have to take again from the same container? He won't understand uh, what the difference is. All right, this is the Gemara's questions and answers on Rabbi Chizda. Now the Gemara goes to Rabbi Nassan before going back to both of them. So the Gemara says, Rabbi Nassan said that the truma counts as truma, the tummy things that he separated counts as truma, but he has to take truma again. So, um, the Gemara's question is, how is this different than a Mishnah where we said that if somebody takes a truma from a uh, container with a hole in order to potter truma from a container without a hole, that is, he took from a chiv on the ptur, he took truma from produce which is chayev in truma. And he went to give it to Pater Chuma, which is not Chayv in Chuma. So the halach over there, the Mishnah says, is the Chuma is Chuma, but he can't give it to the Kohen to eat until he takes Chuma from somewhere else to Pater this Chuma. Now, in our case, we don't say that. Rabbi Nosalina doesn't say both are Chuma, and you can't give this Chuma that you separated from the tame. you can't give that to the Kohen until you're attacking it from somewhere else. What's the difference? Now, the Gemara seems to understand that they are equal levels of Chuma. We are considering it to be Tevel, meaning even though it's Chuma, and therefore it's much for the Kohen to eat, it's no Iser that it requires Chuma to be separated on it, but we're considering it to be Tevel, and we're saying don't give it to the Kohen because the Kohen's going to eat it. Instead, we say you have to take Chuma on it from somewhere else to be attacking it. Now, in the case where it's not tummy, the Kohen's going to eat it. Here, the Kohen's not going to eat it. The Kohen's going to burn it, but it's also us to burn Tevel. So we should have the same problem. So either way, it just like in that Mishnah there, we say that this Chuma has this stuff you separated, from the uh, from the chiyav, from the atzitz, from the flower pot, with a hole. We say that it's truma, and you got to take truma again to be metaking it, and don't give it to the kohen. So in our case, where it's truma, and you got to take uh, truma again, you should also not be able to give it to the kohen until you are metaking it. So the Gemara answers is a very big difference. The case over there, there's no shame truma. The truma didn't work, Daraisa. You took from a container of truma, which is a container of fruits which are chayiv truma, in order to potter fruits which are not chayiv truma. You took from a flower pot with a hole to to try to potter a container without a hole. That doesn't work, and therefore there's no shame truma on this deraisa. You cannot make shame truma on something which is pottering something which is not chayiv truma. 
That being the case, if there's no shame truma, it's tevel. It's real tevel. You got to be mitaken it daraisa. If you give it to the kohen, he'll think that it's truma, which means that it's not tevel. He's, he's going to go eat it. Kohanim are usher and tevel also. Kohanim are only allowed to eat fruits from which truma was removed or the truma itself. But where it was never truma removed, they can't eat it. So that's why you can't give it to the Kohen because he's going to eat it. In our case, however, it is true Maderais. Even though he took Tomei stuff, you're not supposed to do Tomei because the Kohen's going to lose. But it's Chal Shem Truma. The Truma does count on it. Since it's Chal Shem Truma, uh, there's no problem to give it to the Kohen. There's no issue to give it to the Kohen. It is Truma. It's not Tevel. If he burns it, he'll, so he could burn it. And that's fine. You have to take Truma again because we were attacking that, you should, that the Kohen shouldn't lose. Now, what has to be explained, which Rashi explains, is in the case where it's no, where it's not Chal Shem Truma Dairaisa, how can we have to give it to the Kohen altogether? It's not Truma. So Rashi explains that it was a Xera Dairabonan over there to avoid confusion. Since you called it Truma, give it to the Kohen automatically. Don't call something Truma and then keep it by yourself. Now, the Gemara just brings a proof that Menaptura, uh, that in our case, it's Chal Shem Truma Dairaisa. That's in the case where you separated the tummy on tar. I think Mar says there's a pasuk that says don't take the bad stuff to be truma for the good stuff. It says well, itisu alav chayt barim chamas chalbay mimenu. In order that it shouldn't be an avera, that shows that if you are going to do it, it is an avera. So you see, if you take bad stuff on good stuff, it is an avera. Now, if it's not chal at all, it can't be an avera. So it's got to be that it is chal. All right. Now the Gemara is a kash on Rabba. Uh, from Rabbah on Rav Chizda. So Rabbah asks the following thing. Rabbah says, Rav Chizda, I don't understand you. According to you who say that it's not Chal anything, if you take Tomei as Truma on a Tahar, it doesn't become Truma at all. So, um, what's the reason? You said that it's a Gzeira that if you uh, if you say that it is Truma, then he's not going to take Truma a second time. You want him to take Truma a second time, because the coin shouldn't lose. So therefore, you take off the Din Truma from the first Tomei stuff that he st- separated. The problem is, we just got finished saying that it's Chal Shem Truma Dairaisa. If it is Truma Dairaisa, how can you make it not Truma? It's Truma. You want to add him a chiv to make Truma again, fine. But you can't take off the Truma on something which exists, which has the shame truma on it. So the Gemara says, the Rabbanon took the shame truma off it. How are the Rabbanon allowed to do that? So the Gemara says, the Rabbanon are allowed to take off certain deraisa halachos. And I'll show it to you, and this is how we get back to our sugya. In our Mishnah, we paskind that the child is a mamzer from both unions. If the woman has a child from her second husband, He's a mamzer, understood, because she's married to the first husband. If she goes back to the first husband and has a child with him now, that child's a mamzer as well. Yimur says, how could that child be a mamzer? The, she's married to her first husband. Midaraisa, she was never divorced from her first husband, never allowed to marry the second husband. There's no thesis kedushin on the second husband. She's still married to the first husband. So that kid's not a mamzer. That kid's perfectly fine. So it says, how are you allowed to give the kid the shame a mamzer? You want to penalize him? You want to penalize her? Fine, but if you make him a mamzer, he's going to go marry a mamzeris. He's not allowed to marry a mamzeris. He's a regular Yisrael. So the Gemara says, no, not necessarily. Maybe we say he's a mamzer. We just mean that he's not allowed to marry a Yisrael. We're adding a chumrah. We're not saying that he could go actually marry a mamzeris. Where says Shmuel said that, and when Ravan came, he said in the name of Rav Yechanan that this person is a mamzer lechumrah. He's only usher in Yisrael, but not mutter to marry a mamzeris. So, now the Gemara says, Rav Chizah sent a message to Rabbah in the hand of Rav Acha bar Rav Huna. And he said, Are you telling me that Bezdin cannot uproot the Dinim Darai? So we already defended the Kasha, but you're telling me, you're arguing and saying that the Bezdin cannot uproot a Din Darai. So I'll show that they can uproot a Din Darai. The halacha is that if a man marries a woman who's a Kitana, it's not a marriage de eraisa, unless the father marries off. If she's an orphan, her mother or her brother marries her off. It's only considered to be a marriage midar because we don't want it to be hefker. We don't want it to be free without a father, without a husband. At a litu isirun. Now, from when does this count as a real marriage? It's important to know, because if the child dies, if it's a real marriage, her her father's relatives will inherit If it's not a real marriage, her father's relatives will inherit her. If it's a real marriage, her husband 
or his relatives will inherit her. Um, so we have a Bryce that says it's a machokas beishamai beishilel. Beishamai says it's from when she grows up, when she becomes full height. Beishil says it's from when she does chupa, from when she does a marriage with a chupa. Rabbi Yezer's the third opinion says when she has bia. Now the Mishnah, the uh, Bryce here, as at the end, then he can inherit her, and once he can inherit her. He also has other halachos. If he's a Kohen, he could be metame to deal with her after she dies, like a real wife. And she can eat truma. Nothing more says, let's analyze this a little. You're telling me Beishamai says she, when she's full height, without chuppah? How could she be a wife without chuppah? So says, no, Beishamai meant she has to have both things. She has to be full height, she has to be an adult, and she has to have chuppah. Of course, the marriage is not anything without chuppah. And he was saying to base Hillel, Chuppah is not enough until she becomes full height. She becomes full height, then she counts as an adult. Um, now, Rabbi Eliezer said when she gets Bia, so the Gemara asks, how could Rabbi Eliezer say that the action of Vektana doesn't count as anything? What does the Bia Vektana help? So the Gemara says, no, he also meant when she grows up and she does Bia. You need to have the Bia to establish the full marriage uh, halachic relationship. So the Gemara says, but what we learned over here is is that at some point, this husband is going to marry her. This husband's marriage to her counts. It's Chal Midrais, and he inherits her. The problem is, is that she only had a marriage Midra Banan. She was only a Kitana. There was no marriage. There was no Kiddushin that was given to her through a father or when she was an adult. So where is there a marriage at all? And if there's no marriage Darais, then Darais are the correct inheritors, are her father's inheritors. How could the husband take the property? So you see that the Rabbanon, by creating a marriage, the Rabbanon took property away from the father's inheritors and gave it to the husband's inheritors. So you see, Bezin could uproot things. The says, no, that's different, because this is monetary. In monetary, we have a rule, Hefker, Bezin, Halya, Hefker, that Bezin have a right to take money away from whatever they want. It's a court privilege to uh, uproot ownership of property and give it to someone else. Where do you see that? So the Mark quotes two sources for that. One is where it says in Sefer Ezra, As we said, anybody who doesn't fill a certain requirement, his property will be confiscated. Another source comes from Sefer Yeshua. It says, that Yeshua distributed the land to everyone, uh, to all the Shvatim. And we use a phrase here, Roshim, Roshay Ha'avos, the heads of the Avos. So, what's Roshay Ha'avos? What does heads have to do with Avos? Umar says. So the Gemara says the answer is, is that Rashim are like Avos. Leaders, that is referring to the court, the Beisdin, are like fathers. Just like fathers can inherit, bequeath property to their children, whatever they like, they can decide they want to give this to this one and this to that one. The Beisdin can also decide how to distribute what they want to each one. And, and that's how they distributed the property in um, Eretz Yisrael. So, Zimmer, okay, you dealt with the proof about the property, but hold on a second. You said in this Bryce, we also said that the husband is allowed to be a to her. If he's a Kohen, he can become a to her. But hold on a second. Me, Deraisa, he's not her husband, and therefore he's Asr Deraisa to be a to her. So, obviously, the Rabbanan uprooted that Isser as well. Zimmer said, no. Me, Deraisa is a din called Mes Mitzvah, and that a Kohen is allowed to be a to a Mes Mitzvah. That is a person who died that no one else is going to deal with her. So he's her husband. No one else is going to deal with her. It has a din meis mitzvah. The Lord says, doesn't have a din meis mitzvah. Meis mitzvah is that she has no one to bury her. And if you, she, if you call, people come. No one's going to come. Here, she has other family. The Lord says, no, the other family is not going to come. Since they don't inherit anything from her, because we took the inheritance away, they're no longer going to deal with the burial. They don't have a source by which to fund the burial. So therefore, she is a meis mitzvah. So the says, okay, what about the other halacha that she gets the truma? How does she have a right to eat truma? She's not a Asia's Kohen Daraisa. She can't eat truma Daraisa. For instance, we're talking about truma Darabana, things which are rabbinically called truma and are not called truma Daraisa.